Five, four, three, two, one. It's the new Panic Room. It's the show other shows want to be, and the show that authors want to be on. Da! The all-new Panic Room Radio Show is brought to you by HellboundBooks.com. <laughs> well, here we go again. It is uh, 9.30 Central Time on Thursday, the, I think it's, yep, yeah, it's the 4th of, of April, which is 4th of the 4th, which is rather jolly, I think. And it's the new Panic Room episode one three seven. So if you've uh, tuned in for something else, then you may want to go now. I guess, or or hang around and, and listen to the listen to the because it's probably the be- the best podcast type radio show thing out there right now. So um, yeah, stick around and listen to it. And um, yeah, it, it is it is it's been a week. I have to say, it's it's, it's sort of flown by. I don't know, time is just just whizzing by at the moment. Um, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, summer is on it, so the kids will be on summer holiday, summer break soon. So I've got that to look forward to. Great. Um, but anyway, <laughs> he said, try not to be too unenthusiastic. Um, I'm going to, I don't know if it's Steve, are, are, you, are, you, are you already there, Exteen, or, or not? Are you waiting? I am here, but I, I was oh. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know what you're waiting for. I know exactly what you're waiting for. Come on, I'm with <laughs> always cheers me up. Always, always reminds me of you. It's just, it's, it's kind of sweet. Hey. <laughs> it's sort of I stuck the, now, fortunately. <laughs> I, I know. The first time you played it, I cringed. I was like, oh my God. And now I, I do. I look forward to it. It brings a smile to my face when I hear yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. And of course, we, 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 we play, we're not playing it for a while, actually, in the mood, Glenn Miller, which, which is a. It's a, you can't help but smile when that tune comes on, you know, from the opening right. uh, the trumpet, the corner refrain to, to it just, yeah, and it always reminds me of my dad. I mean, he, he used to play, play, play in the jazz band back in the day. Great, great cornet player. Um, big, 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 big Glenn Miller fan, you know, and I always, it's great, you know, I, I love that. And it um, makes me feel old sometimes, but hey, you know, uh, uh, yeah. there you go. There you go. So what? what oh, I, you know, I, I, I was going to. I was going to ask the question, but we have a jingle. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So what yeah. is new, Pussycat? <laughs> I usually try to say something really clever right now, but uh, I really have no idea. I have no You've idea. Got what, no what's idea. Next. Did, did no. we or did we not? We got a new a new audio book out. Did we not? This this. This very week. Did I? He said, uh, I'm prompting you. I'm prompting you. Come on. Who, who, who is head of the did. audio book department? That's me. It's you. So you should know I, this. <laughs> Dear you know, Lord. The, the titles get kind of confused and, you know, they're kind of messed up in my... Yeah, I don't know. What was uh, it? I don't know. Just, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Lord. There you go. <laughs> I just pushed the button, okay? <laughs> I know, I know. It was The Unredeemed by Luke Walker, oh, which is yes, a yes. phenomenal book, but set in Britain. It, it, um, and funny enough, it's set in some place in Britain that I actually know, which is kind of cool. You know, places in, I have, you don't care, do you? You don't care. I, I totally, no. I do totally, mm. yeah. <laughs> no, I was just mm. going to say, the reason I did not know which book it was is because there's so many different processes, and, like, I wasn't sure, you know, I, I'm listening we've got, to We've got right so now. many on the go. I think we've got, we've got, yeah. I think we've got 12 out now. I think there's, like, another nine in in the works in one stage yeah, or another. So. Like, to be fair, I mean, you, you managed to keep up with, with pretty much all of them, so... Uh, 
Um, I try. I, yeah, I just, yeah. I, I first, well, the first I know is, is when, when they go live. And it's just, oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. There They're exciting. Go, but... It really is. It's exciting. It really is. I, I'm, and you know what? I have to say, I'm gonna have. I think it's. I don't know. Can I can I mention his name? I'm listening to one of the the audiobooks now, and I think it's Chris Harbour that is doing the voice, and mm-hmm. he is. He's phenomenal. He really is. I mean, he's he's really getting into it. And the the one that I'm listening to has like two bits in it that have been like singing. You know, just like a kid's ditty, a kid's little tune. And mm-hmm. he gets right into it. And he sings oh, it. And I'm like, sad. I know. I was so I, I'm, I was so impressed. I actually had to write to him and be like, dude, you're, this is awesome. Yeah. He, well, just, really just, just, yeah. Keep, just keep giving him books to do for us. That's yes. great. Because he's, he's done, a, he's done <laughs> yeah. a couple now, hasn't he? He's doing, he's doing he Living the Woods. And which one did he do before that? Oh, yeah, I don't know. But there, yeah, I, Another, I another one. one. Mm. Yeah, another mm. one, another one. No, but Blood in the Woods, that's the one I'm listening to right now. Yeah. And it's just like, and because I've read the book twice, I know what it's, you know, I, I know what mm. it's, what's a, but it's just good. I'm just, I'm I'm so, I mean, because I've heard his voice before, but I've never listened all the way through. And yeah. I'm just so impressed with this guy. I really am. So mm. kudos yeah, to I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of Blood in the Woods, as, as you all well know, you know, and it, it, I, it, do, I can't, yeah. I cannot. And I, I don't often, I, to be fair, I don't, I've never listened to an audiobook all the way through. That one, I think I will, because I think it will translate brilliantly, I have it to did. say. It, so, it um, is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. So, so this is just turning into one, one big plug now. <laughs> you know, I think the, the listeners probably nodded off now. But um, I, I tell you what we have, we, before we bring our first guest, in fact, um, yeah, tell me, before we bring our first we, we, we have a, a mystery call. I'm going to see who this is. Hello, hello. Is this Panic Radio? It, it uh, is. It, it is. Who's this? <laughs> Who are you? I want you to this... speak to Panic. <laughs> I, I, I think it's Lisa. Is it Lisa? No, this is not Lisa. No? Okay, then I'm, no? I'm out. I, it's it's Panic <laughs> Radio. I know, I know. It's, it's Pope Greg York third again. He keeps ringing in. No, no. Is this Panic Radio out of New York? No. Not out of okay, New, New York. Wrong. No. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, no, it's okay. okay. Who, who are, no, it's okay. No, stick around. Who are you? Who are you? Because this is who am I? No, I, we, <laughs> this is the, this is the pan, Panic Room Radio, so you sort of... Panic oh, Room Radio. I'm sorry, I have the wrong radio. No, I have you're the wrong fine. Radio. No, you I have the wrong home. radio. Hey, but no, okay. so welcome, to, welcome to the show. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was exciting, wasn't it? Well, you know, the funny thing is, is I, I do think our number shows that it's out of New York, so that's kind of interesting. I, I, I sounded like Lisa at first to me. I thought it was Lee, Lisa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, obviously, oh, maybe, yeah, they're through the central thing. It's a New York number. Maybe that's where they're... they're uh-huh. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm bored with that now. So, hey, um, <laughs> do, do, do tell, what, what, what do we have on our action-packed Thriller Minute show? Hello, the dog's come to see me. Uh, thriller, thriller Minute <laughs> show this evening. I'm excited tonight. We have USA Today, Amazon best-selling and award-winning author Samantha A. Cole. And Ooh. we have, uh, I know, I know. And then we have crime and horror writer Chris Roy. And he, oh, Chris. he's been on. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be his third time on the show. So he really, yeah. he should know better. But he you keeps coming really, back. <laughs> you really have to question that man's sanity, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, you know, he's just like, oh, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll do that again. You know, no, he's yeah, just crazy, yeah. crazy man, crazy man. A uh, big, big, big friend of both the show and Hellbound books is Chris, so uh, um, it'll be nice. Do you know, and it doesn't, I mean, you said it's been six months or so. It doesn't seem that long since he was last on, bless him. So, I know, uh, I know, because when, when you asked me, you know, Chris is on again, I'm like, yeah, it's been a while. Was, like, said, wasn't he not on last week? You know, no, no, like it, six it, months ago. I was like, wow. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so, um, I, 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 with all the excitement of our mystery caller there, I, I'm, I'm giddy. I have to say, I'm giddy now, feeling Yay. a bit frisky. I have to say, but um, 
the Switch. Of, oh, uh, before, yeah, I, I caught the first of the new Twilight Zone um, oh, yeah? last night. They, 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 they think it's on Netflix, the first two. Is it mm -hmm. or CBS? Anyway, I've, I've, I, I lose track. It's all... I've got this Roku stick now, and it just does everything, which is pretty nifty. But, um, mm. yeah, he was really good. Sort of into Jordan Peele is actually doing the um, the Rod Serling bit, you know, he introduces it and all that. And it, it was, it was the, the comedian. It was absolutely fantastic. Incredibly well done. Loved it. They, they've also done, uh -huh. I think they've redone the Terror at 35,000 feet, which I, I, I may watch after the show. Or if I get bored, I might actually watch it during the show. You never know. <laughs> Isn't it, it's Thursday, opera. isn't that 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 really that really lame uh, sci-fi show? Isn't that on Thursdays too? Now? Um, no, <laughs> no, but but the Orville no. is on, which is um, probably that's, one of the best that's, that's, one of the best science fiction shows about. in a long, long time. I have to say, the so, Orville. Um, that's what I'm talking about. The lame sci-fi show. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, th I think you're confusing it with something lame and rubbish. But the Orville. Oh. Um, as as. <laughs> <laughs> as your as your as your Bo would would point out, he's probably the best thing on television right now. Uh, although oh, again, uh, confessions at guilty secret time. Uh, the third season of the Santa Clarita Diet was I've just uh -huh. binge watched that over the past couple of days, and it was it just gets better. That show just gets better. I've always I wanted to, to see it, but I haven't. Yeah, I've not you watched should it, but see I just it. Well, it. I, I've literally just in three days plowed through all of season three and it was just fantastic <laughs> it's real they're developing it really really well you know so um you should you've mm. got some catching up so anywho anywho any i think we should <laughs> um she's probably she's probably thinking what the what is going on here um uh, I, I will allow you to introduce our very first guest yes sir we have a uh, usa today amazon best-selling and award-winning author samantha a cole <laughs> Samantha, how are you this evening? Uh-oh, do we scare off? <laughs> she probably, yeah, I probably fell asleep, to be honest. Oh, no. I mean, we, we put people to sleep. Samantha! Um, hello? Hello? Hang on. Hello? <laughs> now you see she... Has, well, that was... A, wait, what? Well, yeah. her, her, she, 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 she's here well, somewhere to oh. talk about her book. Her book, Leather and Lace, which is a great, great tagline. How does a vanilla woman write a BDSM novel? With hands-on research. I, I like yeah. it already. <laughs> I do I like do. it. <laughs> and it's funny, actually, I was, I was reading through the excerpt here, and I, <laughs> I, I've reread it, and I sort of get it now. Um, but one of the line is, uh, lines is, eyes up, pet. Now, where I'm from, back in England, in the northeast, up in Geordie Land, pet is like, as you would say, mate or friend or buddy or whatever. So uh -huh. I, I'm reading it in a Geordie accent, eyes up, pet, but it's not. <laughs> He's using pet as, as in pet because it's a, a sub. So, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, there you um, go. Uh, yeah, on, on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, when I used to watch it all the time, uh, Spike, he would, that was his like nickname for, you know, like girls especially. He called them pet. And I, I always thought it was kind of sexy. I did. I, I was like, I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, in the, in the England, in the Midlands, I, I lived in the Midlands for a while, and uh, they, they say duck. They, me duck. Is, um, where I'm yeah. from in Yorkshire, we would, we, we, would say, um, we would say cock is actually. All right, cock. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that is actually a, um, a, a Yorkshire <laughs> colloquialism. How are you doing, my cock? You know, it's just like... <laughs> wow. But, and I was um, like bird, you know, bird when I, you know, you know, isn't that like a, 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 I don't know, an endearment or something for some, I don't know, bird, isn't it? A bird, well, in, in England, a birds bird. are, are like girlfriend, you know, so I'm, I'm off out with yeah. the bird, you know, that's, that's bird. girlfriend. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, the sweet. birds, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I love all of that, you know, all this stuff. And so for as small as England is, you know, you don't have to go too far to get an old, I mean, because I, I, I was sort of from South Yorkshire, but there, there was South Yorkshire and then very, very, very South Yorkshire. Like, you get sounds like we had Lex Jones from Sheffield on the other week, um, Barnsley, which is even further south. And there's, I, I knew people from Barnsley who I couldn't understand. And it was literally 20 minutes down the road from my house. 
from where I grew up. I could I used to actually uh-huh. bike to Barnes, like just to cycle to Barnes, like, um, and uh, yeah, it was like a, a different, totally different language. <laughs> But anywho, any, I'm hoping um, I, I, we 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 should have um, we should have Samantha now. Are you, are you there, Samantha? She says she's there, so I don't know. Yeah, she, 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 she's just deliberately lied to you, so you know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Maybe she's a compulsive liar. I'm not sure, but um, no. no to be fair, she she's. I think we're having te- technical issues. Hello. Um, Hey. Hello. <laughs> Try shouting. Can, can you hear me? Hello. Yay. Can you can you can you hear me at the back? I, I can. You, hello. Can you I hear can me? Hear, I can hear you. I can, can you hear, hear me, you. Can you hear me, mother? Hello. Can you hear me? What? Can you can you hear me at the back? <laughs> you can hear. You should answer. How are you, my dear? Awesome. Okay. You can hear me now. Okay. Good. Yeah, we, we got to. Oh, got sorry you. about that. I I don't know what it was. I could hear you, and I was trying to talk to you, and then I realized that you couldn't hear me. So it's, 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 been, it's, been, a, back. <laughs> it's been a bizarre <laughs> evening because we we had somebody on who was calling for a completely different show. So um, I I did hear I did hear that. I thought that was quite quite comical. That You're was right. Well, we, <laughs> we we should we should, put, we, need, we should I've got a number actually. We should bring her on every week. Just to say, we should be like the com- the confused lady. Just bring her on the confused yes. lady. Yeah, yes. just, just to say, what? Like what? Who are you? What? What is this? Is this is this panic show? What? Hello? Wonder, what is that? Who are you? I, I, What's I, I, going on? I'm wondering what she was panicking about that she was calling. I don't know. I mean, she 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 could be a whole new character for us. I, I'm I'm excited by that. That's fantastic. I like that. Oh, I, you know, I like that. Definitely. She knows less about what's going on than I do, so I definitely say bring her back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to make just to make Christina look 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 knowledgeable. But exactly. um, Samantha, I mean, you've got quite a list: USA Today bestseller, Amazon bestseller, and award. So, what awards did you win? I have to ask. Um, my, I mean, don't my make, just name uh, one. Just name one. Don't make us all feel inadequate, oh, you know. Well, well, it's it, it's only one that I did win. Um, the 2017 Reader's Favorites Award, I took the silver medal in the uh, uh, contemporary romance category for my book called The Friar, which has since been retitled uh, The Road to Solace. Um, a lot of people thought that a lot of people thought it was uh, religious or religious taboo, and mm-hmm. uh, it, so they were skipping over it. However, it was neither. So uh, I gotcha. turned around and retitled it, and it's doing much better. But it did. Oh, that's happen. fantastic! That is fantastic. Yeah. And of course, with it with it being contemporary, Extine has got to, got to ask her a question. <laughs> sure. What time Con- period is it written in? <laughs> what, when, when she actually asked asked the guest that your contemporary novel, what what time period is it set in? Seriously, I kid okay, you not. But- Oh dear! There was a reason I asked that. I cannot remember what it was now, but um, because because you're because you're because you're dim. I think I think that's why. <laughs> because you're you're really not that bright. I do have my moments, but that was yeah. I did kind of. That was uh, a classic. It was. was a, I, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know more about leather and lace. To be honest, That's, I've, I've been I've been scanning down. Um, I, I, tell us a bit more about it, Samantha, please. It uh, sounds, it leather, and la- leather and lace was my was my first uh, my first book that I published. Um, mm-hmm. It was the book that started it all, and that series that it's in uh, the Trident Security series has actually spawned uh, eight books. Mm-hmm. Four novellas in the original uh, um, series, and then four spin-off series. Wow. So currently, there's about 18 books, I think, 18 or 19 books um, in the whole list. And if wow. you go to my website, I have them in order for the best reading order to avoid any any spoilers that show up later on. But um, it's it's a it's in the romance contemporary romance or romance suspense genres um even though it does have some bdsm in it it's what? more of a background it's not um overly uh prominent 
and um, it just adds to the storyline. But as a mm-hmm. retired police officer, I always have to have some suspense in my books. And uh-huh. so I have my serial killers. I have my drug drug dealers. I have my kidnappers. It all comes around to that. But I try and do one-third romance, one-third uh, suspense, and then one-third sex. So... A little bit of everything that's, for everybody. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a, jolly, a jolly good sort of split, isn't it? <laughs> like that. I've got, be, I've, got be, I've got to be third sex in there. I've got to go about in there. You know. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to have some. Which of the thirds do you, do you prefer to write? Which is your favourite third? <laughs> I'm sorry, which is my favourite? Third. Third to mm. write. The suspense oh, my- to sex or the other one? <laughs> oh, oh, my favorite third. To, um, oh God, that's hard. Um, the suspense I like doing because of my background, but mm-hmm. um, the, the, yeah, the sex is always fun to write. <laughs> but yeah. after a while, after a while though, you have to be cautious because they start your scenes start uh, sounding alike. And yes, you want each yes. couple to be different, so yeah, you, yeah. But I mean, it's, there's you, always so you don't many want ways to be repeating. That you can, you don't, you can do that really to be honest yeah you, 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 right. yeah you're right you don't want to get into a rut yeah mm-hmm. you don't want to get into a yeah. rut about it or you don't you don't want to go too far and it, it, it starts sounding like you're writing pornography i mean that that i i, I yeah. tend to veer in that direction unfortunately i have to tone it down <laughs> quite a lot because it, it gets it get, i get i i i get quite i get too gynecological because i'm i guess i'm, I'm a biologist by <laughs> trade so I'm, I'm not shy you know but I, I know the you know the finite details and it, it just it is it's almost it's like a, 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 a gynecological lecture <laughs> which is not a good and if you get too technical it, 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 it throws everything off you can't get too well, technical like yeah that. I start going on about you know the Bartholin's gland and stuff like that I think this is just going to be he is lying. Some, he is somebody, lying. no, seriously, no. I've actually written that her, her Bartholin's gland was working overtime. I, I kid you not. And I can just I imagine some, Google. some poor, little, some poor little chap. He's reading the, the, the dirty bit in my novel, and he has to pause yeah. to look that up. And he yeah, has to look that it. up, you know, and it's like, spoiled the moment for him, you know. It's like, I did edit that out, Al Chaff. I you know, you can't do that. You can't put that. <laughs> seriously. Well, well wow. the, seriously the, one thing I, I, the one thing I find with, with writing the sex scenes is that you have to count the number of legs and arms that you have. Because... <laughs> All of a sudden, somebody there's there's a third hand in there somewhere, and yeah. you're not quite sure where. Yeah. It came from. Oh, you, so you yeah, do, you do that, and then suddenly you, somebody's licking something that is is physically impossible yeah. to read like, from that angle. There? Yes. Well, how, yes. how is his head suddenly there? How is that? No, you can't do that. No, no. Awesome. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not uncommon for romance writers to grab their significant other and say, "Okay, can <laughs> can we just like do this? And can I reach here, or can we do this? Yeah. Do this position? Does it work?" <laughs> <laughs> I never thought yeah, about so, that before. <laughs> yeah. Because we've all we've all read that one book where you're you're reading the sex scene and you're just like, oh god, this is a game of Twister, and there's like too many. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you just think that would never work. You cannot do that. Yeah, definitely. I've definitely been there before. Yeah. So oh, that's yes. a- that's awesome. Well, I tell you, it's funny. I mean, I, 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 I've written my fair share of erotica, and even I mean, my my uh, that was my second novel. Pete, well, Flanagan has a lot of sex in it. Pete has a fair bit of sex in it as well. But uh, I, the, the novel I actually was still working on um, actually has a an, an, a, a nice a, a sex scene. With it's uh, elderly people. <laughs> I know. No, seriously, the, 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 the heroes of the piece are a bunch of um, sort of uh, elderly people who break out of a, um, a memory care clinic. Um, and it, I, I again, I, 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 it took me a long time to craft the sex scene because it was, you know, if two septuagenarians, you know, but it, and I'm pleased with it. You know, it's nice. I wanted it to be sweet, you know, obviously not. Right. 
uh, you know, well, 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 tongs and sweaty bodies, and it, it was sweet. And it, <laughs> it, 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 I it almost, I almost took it back to them as, as like, as, as teenagers, you know, sort of approaching it as nervous oh, nice. teens, and it, it works. Right. I, I, I feel it works. I mean, works very well. I, I, I did wait. write uh, yeah. a um, a seasoned romance, which uh, the couple was in their fifties, and he's right, be careful. Be and, careful. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm in my fifties too. Just, so don't they worry were, about so they, was, they were still young people then. <laughs> yes, yeah. he, he, he was in the military, and she was a uh, a former um, spy. So they were both kick ass, and. Mm-hmm. But they were also dealing with some of the issues that come with, you yeah. know, as mm-hmm. you're getting a little older. And uh, I, I had a lot of my my readers who are in their fifties and sixties and seventies said, you know, you did such a good job. It's nice to get a seasoned couple every now and then that Definitely. are actually having those real life problems. I, yeah, yeah. I, en- I enjoyed the challenge of making it, like you say, you know, dealing with the practicalities and making it, making it sweet. I want people to go, oh, you know what I mean? Right. Um, <laughs> which hopefully, like, Christine is going to be editing it, so she'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I love the characters. I read the short story, and the the characters definitely were way more than you know short story worthy. So they definitely need their own book. So I'm actually, I can't wait for you to finish this and uh, so I can get my hands on it. So I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on the third draft at the moment. I just, it's just, it's just, Yay. there's not oh. enough. I need to, I need to invent like another three days in a week to get it all done. But yes, um, yeah, I, 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 I honestly have never understood third drafts because I'm a two draft writer. Oh, I really? Write my first draft. Yep. I write my first wow. draft and I'm constantly revising as I'm, as I'm writing. Yeah. I'll go back and fix things and then, once I'm done with it, I send it to my my editor, and she'll send it back. And then I do the 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 you know all the edits, and send it back to her, and send it to my beta readers at that point. So yeah, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm one of those two draft people. I know I, I, I know need... it was a one draft person, and I'm like, oh my yeah. god, I can't do one draft. No, <laughs> no, no. My, my, my first my <laughs> first draft is just. Not not really readable by anybody but me, you know. I, I usually get to about a third draft, and it's it's taking shape nicely, you know. So, uh, are, but, you know, are you we pan- all have our own. Are you, hmm? are you a pantser or are you a plotter? Uh, I a little bit. Do you write? Okay, a little yeah. bit of both. A little bit of both. Okay. I, I need because I I need I need a plan, but otherwise I I will. Extina, uh, she's read a lot of my work. I I, I very easily go off at a tangent. And I can but end up writing, you know, yeah. you know ten thousand words, and it's you know, and it's good, but it has nothing to do with the story <laughs> at all. Yeah. It's just off I go, off I go. So at least even if it's just <laughs> oh, a thank, bare, thank God I don't do that. <laughs> it's a bare bones plan. I at least I've got something to come back to. So, so I'm wandering okay. off, I'm wandering right, I need to be back here now. And it's really, I just yeah. need that bit of structure for my own discipline. Otherwise, I, I'd have like a, you know, a 300,000 word book that was, it was nicely read, written, but meant nothing. You know, nothing, none of the <laughs> plot lines would, would end, would finish, you would just off to go, <laughs> and bring off. You know? and he's kind of like that in real life too. You know, I'm, I'm just lucky he can sit during, you know, our 90 minute show and not, you know, wander off and, Chase the red bull and stuff. So yes, I do. I do. I do fidget. I do fiddle. Usually during you the readings, do. actually, I do tend to fiddle with uh, things. I, I try not to, but I can't help it. I can't help it. Speaking, speaking of reading, and uh, you know, we have you're you're here to talk to us about your book, Leather and Lace. And again, you know, James had mentioned the the tagline: "How does a vanilla woman?" write a BDSM novel hands-on research. That is awesome. And uh, I definitely want to hear more. Uh, do you have an excerpt for us? I do have an excerpt. Um, let me set it up for you just a little bit because we cu- it starts in the middle of the scene. Um, okay. Chris- Kristen had met Devin in a uh, bar restaurant that uh, his friend's brother owns. And they... Long story short, after a couple of meetings, they, they decide to go out on a date. 
And in the meantime, she gets a uh, tour of a local BDSM club through one of her beta readers who is a member. And what she doesn't know is that Devin is one of the owners of the BDSM club. So uh, she yeah. is with she was with his cousin getting a tour in the afternoon when there is uh, no other um, members around and just giving her some information. So Devin just shows up and decides to take over her tour. So that's uh-huh. where this starts, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, all right? it's all yours. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Devin took a step toward her. Kristen's response was instantaneous, and she took two steps back, looking for a way to get around him. He arched his brow and took another step. She tried not to react again, but before she knew it, he had her backed up to the wall and stopped right in front of her, blocking her escape. Without saying a word, he reached out and took her pad and papers, tossing them on a small table behind him before doing the same with her pen and purse. He took hold of her wrists and brought her arms above her head. There were only a few inches between their bodies, and she could feel the heat of his. She wished he would, she, she wished he would take a half step forward toward her, and then she would know what it felt like to be in contact with his hard chest, sculpted abs, and trim hips. Oh, and don't forget the massive erection he was sporting. Eyes up, pet. Heaven help her. She lifted her chin and fa- to find a perceptive grin on his face, and she turned red, knowing he- she had been caught staring at his crotch. He leaned forward, his mouth almost touching her ear, and whispered, You still haven't answered my question. The words may have been simple, something you could hear in an everyday conversation, but somehow he made them sound erotic, and the heated feel of his breath on her ear didn't help. She swallowed hard, her legs trembling. Not in fear, he wouldn't physically hurt her. She didn't know how she knew it, but she did. But no, it was the sexual sexual electricity between them which had been un- she, which had her unable to control her quivering muscles. What? What was the question again? Why are you researching BDSM when you write vanilla sex? Couldn't he back up a little? Um, well, my first nine books are are vanilla, but my last book was based on a BDSM club, and, and now I'm writing the second one in a series. My niece, a kinky romance to read? He didn't sound happy about that at all. Actually, I didn't give that one to her, only the others. It felt a little weird giving a 19-year-old a BDSM book. She drew a deep breath, relieved when he took a step backward. But her feeling of relief didn't last long when she realized her arms were stuck. Tilting her head up, she tugged on her arms to find he had shackled her wrists with Velcro restraints dangling from the balcony overhang. How did she not know he was doing that? Oh, God, she was trapped. She gaped at him and was annoyed to see that he was laughing at her with a sinister smirk, His arms crossed over his muscular chest again. Damn, the man was gorgeous and dangerous. Not in a bad way, but also not in a good way. And here she was with no way to escape. She wouldn't panic. Master Mitch was right upstairs. She was safe, wasn't she? Let me go. She hoped the demand would sound confident, but instead instead it sounded breathy. He shook his head. Not until your tour is complete. Damn, how had she not noticed how arrogant the man was? I didn't know class participation was part of the tour. Devin let out a full-blown laugh. Oh, how I love bratty submissives. They give me plenty of reasons to spank their asses red. And I'll tell you, at the moment, my hand is itching to get at your sweet ass. I'm not a submissive. The look he gave her said he didn't believe her for one second before he turned around and took three steps to the table where he had put her things. Turning a wooden chair around, he straddled it and sat down, sat down facing her. Without saying a word, he picked up her pad and the papers Mitch had given her and began to look through them. Hey, that's my stuff. I didn't give you permission to look through my notes. Quiet. He never looked up as he issued the deep voice command, and it sent a shiver through her body. She began to glance around, trying to figure out how to get out of the restraints. She should be scared out of her wits, but for some reason she wasn't. Instead, she was turned on, which freaked her out a little. Well, actually a lot. 
Yes, she had fantasized about this stuff, and she wrote about it, but it didn't appeal to her in real life, did it? Apparently it did, because her because during her entire marriage, she had never once been this aroused, and Devin had only touched her wrists. What would happen if he had touched her in other places? Did she want him to? Her body screamed at her, hell yeah. She looked back at him and realized he was now reading the papers Mitch had given her. Shit. While Mitch had been talking on her phone, she had skimmed through the soft and hard limit checklist. She didn't fill out the entire form, but had checked off what she considered to be hard limits for her. Everything else she skipped over, planning to go through the list again later to figure out what she thought she would like and what she wasn't sure about. Hey, stop that. It's private. Devin rolled his eyes and sighed, then got up from the seat. Without looking at her, he strode over to the cabinet she hadn't noticed, which was built into the wall a few feet away from her. He grabbed something and then shut the door again before walking back to his seat. Pivoting to face her, he held up the object. Do you know what this is, pet? She had a feeling she did, but she bit her bottom lip and shook her head. It's a ball gag. Usually I only give an order once and expect it to be obeyed, but since this is new to you, here is your second and final warning. Stay quiet unless I ask you a question. Your only answers should be yes, sir, or no, sir unless I ask you for a detailed answer. Anything else out of your mouth will result me in using the ball gag. Understood? As her girly parts began to throb, Kristen nodded her head, and he frowned at her. Yes, yes, sir. Do you wish to use your safe word? If you do, I'll let you loose and escort you out without your research, of course. What? Crap. He was serious. No, sir. Devin placed oh my the gag gosh. on the table. Okay. We're gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm gonna have to cut you off, and I hate that because okay. that was so good. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. gosh! <laughs> um, you know, I was just going to, uh, I was making a note to myself to remember later about the uh, the girly parts. You know, begin to throb. I, I'm a, I'm a fan <laughs> of throbbing girly parts. So that, that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and twi- twitching, twitching manly parts as well, if I remember yeah. rightly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Twitching and and yeah, I, I that was twitching good. Twitching and throbbing. <laughs> I I think I'm going to have to beg a copy of this book so I can get my hands on it and and see uh, what else makes the girly parts throb. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I still have readers that swear that this was their favorite book out of, out of all of them. And my, my, and, and I, sometimes I don't get it because my, my writing has grown since then. And, but there, there are, there are, Fans that you know, readers that just absolutely love Devin and Kristen, and they will say flat out that that is their favorite book out of the entire series. Awesome. Um, you know, speaking of the the whole BDSM and and the you know books and everything, uh, what do you where do you stand on uh, the Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh, don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I I did read the trilogy. Um, I did. Yeah. And and um, I found it entertaining. I I did have some issues with 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 some of the uh, the BDSM writing. aspects and some of the uh, uh, some of the just the general writing aspects. But uh, yeah. you know everybody has their own style and whatever. Mm-hmm. But I will say that um, there's so many authors that need to thank her. For mm-hmm, opening definitely. up yeah. that genre that had yep. always been taboo, and yeah. you know, um, I had actually discovered BDSM uh, novels: uh, Cherie Sinclair, Lexi Blake, Kennedy Lane, Angel Pain, uh, Avery Gale, all my favorites, um, mm-hmm. way uh, before Fifty Shades came out. Uh-huh. So I already had that background of that type of mm-hmm. uh you know of that genre so uh i i have not seen the movies i have no desire to see them i have not read the uh the book from his point of view um, mm-hmm. i just couldn't see rehashing the same story right. from right. a different point right. of view that's yeah yeah you know, no. that that would just be me for for any other series it you know it didn't have to be for that I just can't right. see reading the same story from a different point of view. 
Yeah, no, I so, totally agree with that. Yeah, and as far as the, you know, I, you know, I have said before, you know, that that I actually started reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Everybody was reading it. Everybody was talking about it, and I'd heard that it was, you know, fanfic, and that was a Twilight fanfic, and I, I was a huge fan of Twilight, so I was like, I'm gonna read this, and it probably halfway through before I was like, wait a minute, there's no vampires. You know, so that was that right. was a shock to me, and a little let down. I, but um. <laughs> I actually I actually did not hear that until about two years uh, ago that it, that wow. it had been fan fiction, and um, yeah. I was also not a Twilight fan, so you know it it really wouldn't have meant anything to me at the time. Um, right, right. But uh, yeah, you know, my cousins were reading it. My aunt read it in her book club. My mom read it. You know, everybody read it, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, my my mom has no clue. I I wrote. BDSM, and um, I want to oh, keep that. <laughs> that is, I that is so odd for me. Your mom doesn't know. Wow. Well, no, no. Well, she, <laughs> she know, she know, she's read my vanilla stuff, and uh-huh. she knows that. Um, she, I'm sure she has an idea, but I <laughs> told her that you know I can't write the way my characters want me to write them. Yeah. If yeah. I'm censoring myself for her or anybody else. Right, right. I said I tried that, and I said my my characters fell flat. Right. And I said I can't I can't censor myself like that. And she uh, understands, and she's been good with it. And like I said, she's read my vanilla stuff, and and uh, she likes it. You know, she loves it. Yeah. And, I, I uh, hate. She, to, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say I hate to do this to you, Samantha, but we are out of time for our first segment. Um, first segment. Um, you have to promise to come back. I I. I want to have you back. I absolutely will. We'll just do a whole show because uh, you're just way too much fun, and I, I hate <laughs> even letting you go. We, but, I say we, uh, we will call it the yeah. Girly Parts show, definitely. Yes, yes, the yes. Throbbing, oh, yes. Girly Parts special. Throbbing, throbbing Girly Parts. You got it. Yes. Throbbing Girly Parts special. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so, uh, and, 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 and twitching man parts. Don't. Yes. Yes. Then we'll be parts. twitching. Definitely be twitching. <laughs> yes. Thank you. So I would love to come back. On. Thank you for having me. It's Thank been an absolute pleasure, Samantha. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. And bye. You. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. And yeah, well, time has just slipped away from us. We're going to be right back after this. <laughs> Radio Show is sponsored by Hellbound Books, purveyors of all manner of dark fiction. You can find the publisher along with links to all their available works across platforms at hellboundbookspublishing.com. Hellbound Books is proud to be the first in the indie publishing business with a very own app on both Google Play and the App Store. In the mood for something steamy to read, check out new erotica author Jennifer Lynn's website at jenniferlynnerotica.com. You can find James at his website, www.jameslongmore.com, and Xtina has an author page found on the Help on the website. Don't forget to follow the Panic Room Radio Show on social media. Our Facebook page, unofficial, the Panic Room Radio Show, Twitter at Panic Room Radio, our YouTube channel, the new Panic Room Radio Show, and come visit our website at www.panicroomradio.com. <laughs>
Welcome back to part two. Welcome back indeed. Are you there, Christina? I am. I am. I just hey. finished, you know, painting my nails, so I, I'm good painting to go. Nails. Yeah, me, me, me too. <laughs> me too. Actually, I no, I went, I went for, a, I went for a nice big wee. So uh, <laughs> we, 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 we have a, another mystery call. I'm going to see who this is. Actually, I'm excited. Hello. You guys, really? You guys are out of control. <laughs> Well, we try. Yeah. We try. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you're talking about uh, you, you're talking about your details in your book, and then Christina, Xtina, I should say, Xtina talking about her throbbing parts. My goodness, you're on the air, Christina, for crying out loud, Xtina. Sorry. I know. You know. I I I know. But you know, throbbing girly parts. That is like. You know, I think I could write a and, whole book and and call it throbbing girly parts. I think that would work. And James <laughs> talking about licking stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, it does happen. It does happen. Well, I think Throbbing Girly Parts would be a, a great name for a punk band back in sort of 1977. Yes, yes. Well, you know, do like, you sing? You know, I, I, I can back it, you know, Xtina. I'm sorry I keep calling you Christina. You prefer to be called Xtina, right? Am I right? Xtina, yeah, X. She, I'm sorry. she No, she can't, she can't sing in a word, no. And I know, no, now I know can't. what the X stands for. It's terrible. <laughs> it stands. It stands for throbbing girly parts. Obviously, <laughs> it does. Yeah. No, I, I did well, try to sing one time on the show. I tried to sing "Take Me Out to the Ball Game," and um, it was horrible. It was a nightmare. Um, I'm hoping we had buried that episode so it, it could never see the light of day again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we can, I'm gonna. Fi- I'm gonna find it now. You know, I'm gonna look for it. <laughs> thanks. So. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, so I'm, I'm, was that Samantha? Was that Samantha Cole? It was. It was. It was, it was Samantha A. Cole. She was, yeah. she was prolific. She was great. I, nine, Nineteen, 19 books—that is just phenomenal. I, I, how she turned those on. All good stuff as well, you know. Mm-hmm. No, it takes me yeah. ten years to write one. <laughs> it, it takes me a long time to write one, especially at the moment. It's just you know. If, if yeah, that's all I have, you're looking stuff, right, James? It's when I'm, I, I always, I often have to have to pause to lick things. I'm, I'm forever <laughs> thinking, like, I, I, do I write another chapter or should I just sit and lick this? <laughs> hey, Christina has a part of the throbbing, right? <laughs> Actually, oh my goodness, I gotta get out of that habit. <laughs> you can just well, I tell you, I mean, here we go. Okay, see, there is sort of confession time. So what? What about another one of my guilty pleasures, actually? My, my daughter has a pet ferret. I think anybody who listens to the show knows. Uh, one of my, be- my favourite things is to sniff its tummy. Because this ferret actually <laughs> smells like... Fr- Seriously, she smells like Frizos. And I will, I will literally get her out of the cage and just sniff her tummy. Because it's just like the most <laughs> delicious smell. It's gorgeous. That is the strangest thing I've ever heard, I think. There you go. You, 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 you know what? We're supposed to be horror writers, but that's the scariest thing I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really next time. Seriously, next, next time, <laughs> next time you go by a pet store, pop in and ask if, if they wouldn't mind awfully if you could sniff one of their ferrets' tummies, because they're, they're really oh, honestly, oh boy. genuinely they 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 do they smell like Fritos. It's really really good. You know, but, m- moving I don't on. Spoil it. Hmm? I get yeah, yeah. it. Spoil it, but one time my son was really, really sick and he vomited on the floor and um, it smelled like Fritos. So I, I, I don't think oh, Fritos. Okay. Is, yeah, Fritos isn't like a good smell to me. I mean, now if you said. They uh, wouldn't be after cream, that, no. no. Yeah, if you said like sour cream in, in chives, like chips or something, I, I could get behind that, but not the Fritos. Yeah, I, I'll pass on that. <laughs> mm. Well, I'll well. let you guys get to your next guest. You, you, uh, I've been enjoying it so far. And, uh, and you, I've been throwing little for, comments in here. Yeah, you, you guys are always fun. Believe it or not, I do listen to you uh, regularly. I do always throw comments in there. Sometimes I try to try to say hello on the phone, but sometimes you know I, I don't have the time to stay on hold. But uh, but uh, uh-huh. keep having fun. I'm, we're we're listening and we're enjoying. Brilliant. Thank, yeah, yeah, thank, thank you for calling. Oh, it's a pleasure. Okay, have a good one. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, we, we think that was, that was obviously that was the listener calling in, which was fantastic. But, uh, <laughs> so um, yes, we, we, we do need to get to our um, we need to get to our guest. So who 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 pray tell, Xtina is our next guest. Uh-uh. We have a third time returning guest horror writer Chris Roy. Do we? Are you sure about that? Um, are, you, are, you, I, are you sure? So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you just you widening you <laughs> Chris, how are you there, sir? Hey, it's really good to be back in Panic Room. How are you guys doing? Hey, we're great. Always, always a pleasure. I keep, as we were saying earlier, this is your third time. You, you really should know better by now. <laughs> yes. You guys got this thing down bad. I'm loving it. Great show tonight. Nicole's <laughs> fantastic. Wait, wait, was, she, she, was. she was phenomenal. She was phenomenal. I, I, not familiar with the work. At time. I will, I'm going to make an effort now. But, um, you know, all, all the talk of girly parts and uh, <laughs> suspense twitching and sex and parts. No. twitching man parts. It's just got me all, all unnecessary. But, um, it's, yeah, great to, um, great to speak to you again, Chris. It's been, it's been a a while, apparently it doesn't seem that long, I know it's been a while, but um, here to talk about A Time for Violence. I think last time we spoke, it was still um, still in its, its conception stages, so um, yeah, t- t- tell our listeners a little bit more about it. Yeah, it's, the, uh, it's an anthology that uh, I co-edited with uh, Andy Roush, and we're going to publish it at Close to the Bone, May 1st. Uh, we have uh, an incredible... A uh, list of authors here. We have uh, Richard Chismar, Stephen Spignesi, uh, Bev Vincent. All three of those guys co-wrote with Stephen King. We got Joe Lonsdale. He's you know everybody in crime fiction talks about this guy. Uh, we have an old school horror writer, John Russo of uh, Night of the Living Dead uh, uh, fame, and we have Max Allen Collins who who wrote the uh, the Quarry series. It's a Cinemax. Uh, series now, and uh, he wrote he wrote the Road to Perdition, that Tom Hanks movie. Uh, mm-hmm. We have uh, Richard Christian uh, Matheson. Uh, he's he's up and coming. His dad is a legend. He he wrote uh, in fact he wrote uh, the Vampire story, I Am Legend, uh, where dreams may come. That guy is incredible. This time we have him in anthology. We have uh, Tyson Blue. We have uh, some lesser known but just as talented authors, uh, Tom Botter. Elka Ray, Tony Knighton, Andrew Nett. We have those all, all those have been on your show uh, previously, so you know they're great. We have Isabel Blackthorn, fantastic writer at Hellbound Books. We, we, we have, do, um, yeah, Isabel, big fan of Isabel. Mm-hmm. We have this really crazy MF her name. James Longmore. He wrote this great story <laughs> called The, Ma- the Mouse. I, you know, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I'm told he's fantastic. I'm told he's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's hilarious, horrifying at the same time. The things is, these mice do to this guy's car is just unspeakable. You have to read it. It's one of the best stories in the anthology. Oh, it. thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's a that's a, a heck of a, a table of contents there. Wow, there's some like I mean, I mean that I must admit that I, I you know joking is I'm absolutely honored. To be in such a lineup, this uh, it's just like a, it's like a who, who's who of, of horror. I mean, it's just phenomenal, mm-hmm. absolutely. I yeah. mean, how how on earth did you manage to round round up such a you know such a, a plethora of talent? Yeah, no doubt. You know, usually you get an anthology and there's there's a hand and then the rest of them are flops. You know, this one's bang 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 one after another. Mm-hmm. Really great stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we 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 were thrilled. We our our last anthology we, we brought out just before Christmas, the Made in Britain, that we we, um, uh, we sort of Kevin J Kennedy uh, compiled it for us. Um, we we got we got Guy and Smith, and and I was absolutely thrilled. I've been a fan of Guy and Smith since the your sort of late seventies, early eighties with his, his his crabs books, and that was just like uh, a moment for me, you know. But um, but this, like you say, I mean. I, I, I don't always, you know, go, go ahead and buy, buy everything I'm in, but uh, this one, I'm having this for myself because it's going to be mm-hmm. such a phenomenal book, and I'm, I'm excited. And that's, that's out 1st of May, which is brilliant. Um, and, of course, Chris, 
didn't mention himself. Chris is in it as well uh, with his his book uh, Waste Management, which sounds it does sound fun. I'm looking forward to reading it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I would like to read the opening to Waste Management if you guys have time for it. Oh, hey, yeah. Would you, would you like to do that now? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go for it. All right. His grip relaxed, then clamped, snatched, pushing with the other hand. A leg torqued from an uncooked chicken crackled an image in his mind. The woman's face replaced by hair in a blink. Shoulders rolled up in soiled coveralls, lingered a tense moment. Heavy breathing mixed with a deep moan, steaming to a sky out of the corpse. His gloves moved, squeezed. The weight of the woman, alive, was changed to a lifeless load. The speed of it was a pleasantry internalized. Lips drawn his thick tongue passed over them, nostrils puffing. Mold permeated the concrete wall where it joined the pavement. Service drive flooded with continuous drainage from the restaurant. The woman's body splashed onto the pavement, ass, then hands, legs splayed, back to the wall, hair where her face should be. The man watched with thoughtless in the leg. The water darkened. Spread toward his boots. No. Dishes rang from just inside the doorway. Loose rocks popped. Boots coated in sludge rotated him. Hard leather stretching. Solid still as a wide cliff. Boulder shifting the top. His large frame froze. Head turned toward the restaurant's kitchen. He watched the light on the floor. More dishes. Tap shutting off. His nostrils seeped. Scissors paused the building, shot into motion, all arms and legs swinging inky shades on the brick walls, black to gray. Heavy steel toes tread out of the dank alley, fists encased in an unknown animal hide, pumped forward, unchanging pace, resounding the mass of the man that stopped in front of the truck, opened the door, stepped, swung into the driver's seat in one fluid move and shut it. Detonation shook the pavement. Diesel engine knocked, roaring to a steady thrum. The man's head appeared in the side mirror, block of pitch black with a slash of orange illuminating his narrowed stare. The truck reversed, rumbled past the open kitchen exit, tires throwing water. The concrete wall amplified a halting, sharp screech. The corpse at its base vanished beneath a cloud, pink exhaust thrusting through the red flash of brakes. Setting the brake, he climbed out and grabbed the woman, strained, absent from the lift. Trying not to focus on her cooling vitality, he held to the moment, the sudden charge of her life's heat. Death sensed, then snuffed, an exotic battery sucked dry in a wink of plasma. Her pants waist stretched, Ass soft on knuckles, uniform collar tearing as he hefted, tossed her into the back. The refuse compressed, enveloping her with a welcome soft hiss. The big diesel revved, clutch engaged, the truck freight train back down the alley. Waste management caught the lights towering in a plaza, the service truck accelerating into the turn. His nose puffed above the steering wheel, gloves gripped wide. The engine cycled pings that deafened pedestrians, cab bumbling with a pulse unstoppable. The grime on the windshield absorbed yellow-white glares cascading down at precise intervals, failed attempts to penetrate the interior. Slits of amber, sitting high in the darkness inside, studied the road. The direction of the next job was a man's only thought. That's the opening. Wow! I like. I was there. I like that. I like that. I, again. I'm, I, 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 I can't wait to get the whole get the whole book in my my hands so I can read that. That was brilliant. That's like so descriptive. It just puts you right there. That's it, that it? Really you can you can you can smell the diesel. It's, I love that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And <sighs> <laughs> not and not and not a throbbing a throbbing lady part anywhere. <laughs> which was nice. Which was no, nice. We've had, we've had 
We've had quite enough of those this evening. Thank you. <laughs> that that's what makes our show interesting is the throbbing girly parts. I I think you know that that. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it's about. It, it made it makes people want to buy the book. You have to do it. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what's <laughs> You know, normally when we have Chris, normally when we have Chris on the show, we do um, the embarrassing story bit. I don't think he's ever, ever, ever done uh, eleven questions with me, though. No, uh, which is no. Yeah, he he so, did he Chris did do the embarrassing story last time, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think I did one. I did one embarrassing story, and then I did uh, eleven random questions. Yeah, so I'm I'm uh, half and half on that. Yeah, uh, well, these, no, are, the, these are the questions are different now. Epstein has changed yeah. them. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah. be, before oh. before we do, Chris, I mean, I've, I've got to ask. I mean, you know, what 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 was your inspiration for this story? Well, I was invited to write a a series for a magazine. Um, it was supposed to bring back the Jalo genre, you know, the Blood Red Experiment, Close to the Bone. And they produce some really fantastic magazines. Um, and so uh, I ended up um, I ended up saving the story, and for this purpose here, really, I, I didn't know where to place it, and, mm-hmm. and I found a home for. It. I'm glad I saved it for this. Um, but yeah, so that was I originally wrote it for a magazine, and uh, I know the Jallo is it was it's uh, you know Jallo is uh, Italian for yellow, referring to the the old yellow book covers from the Jalo books in the in the 60s and 70s, and they were mm-hmm. they were you know crime horror books about uh, serial killers, fast moving serial killers in trench coats with gloves and killing women with knives type stuff, and and so we wanted to bring that back. Uh, Close to Bone wanted to bring that back in a neo Jalo way uh, with you know the the best riders they had in their stable and uh, I was very honored to be to be invited to it um, I missed the first couple of uh, issues in the magazine and then they stopped producing them they, they weren't um, no, no. Yeah. that's what this story is really originally uh, written for I'm not um, I've had some test readers check it out and I'm unsure whether it's like a dark psychological thriller or pure horror I think it's it's more mm-hmm. horror than anything. You can't go wrong with horror, though. I mean, that's uh... no, you cannot. No, no. You cannot. So, hey, um, okay, over to Xena. Do you want to do? Do you want me to press the button, Xena? Yeah, press that button. Let's do this. And now, eleven questions. Okay, number one. What's your guilty pleasure? Oh man. Uh, okay. An entire box of nutty bars. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. I will. I will eat, you know, I'll get a box of nutty bars and I'll break it into like these little bite-sized pieces, and and I'll I will savor each little layer from each little piece. Just take my time, and by the time I'm done with it, uh, you know, my mouth is like blistered. The roof of my mouth is but I don't care because it was so good, you know. Um, and I'm like, I know I shouldn't eat this crap, man. And yeah, because I'm a fitness guy. And I'm into this. And I train guys in here all the time. And so, um, yeah, I'm telling guys, you know, it's not, don't eat a lot of salt. And then I'm like, sugar. And here I am smashing an entire box of nutty bars. <sighs> nutty bars are good. Yeah, I, they, I, I, is it a little Debbie snack or is it a hostess? Whatever it is, they, they, I think they're one of the best uh, little snacks out there. They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Do you prefer the mountains or the ocean? Ocean, definitely. I grew up on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I miss the water. Yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. definitely a water guy. Um, let's. Oh, here we go. What's your favorite lunch meat? Ooh, roast beef. Oh, good one. I'm so glad good you didn't choice. say turkey. We would have had a buzz good you out. Yeah, roast beef is good. Mm. Yeah. I used to go to deli. I used to go to deli. I would get roast beef, uh, Swiss cheese, or whatever kind of cheese, and then you know some kind of cool bread. Yeah, I, I'm definitely definitely a roast beef guy. It's always roast beef. Yeah, yeah. A good, a good Brit- a British, uh, British, a British lunch meat. I love to follow up the question about lunch meats with, uh, if it were legal to do so, would you eat human flesh? 
Uh, well, I don't know. You know, it would yeah, be, think it would about have it. To be a, a survival <laughs> scenario, I believe. Yeah, and um, okay, see, that, that's that's a good a good answer, you know, because James was like, "Hell yeah, it doesn't even have to be legal," and you know, um, so I, I'm kind of worried when I <laughs> worried, but uh, so that that's definitely a good answer. <laughs> um, have you ever been pulled over yeah. for a traffic uh, violation? For a what violation? Traffic, traffic, you know, driving. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so the last time I got pulled over, I was doing um, I was doing 95 and a 55, and I passed. I was on a little little cross track, a little Yamaha 600. And I passed the state trooper, and they did not turn around. They missed the turnaround, so I kept going, and 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 before I knew it, I'm doing like 135, and then. The state trooper zooms up next to me, and it, you know, I nearly swerved off the road. I was scared, so I pulled over, and I was so nervous I couldn't even put the bike on a kickstand. It almost fell over. You know, and this guy got in my face yelling. You know, he's like a drill sergeant. My face and spitting and everything. And then he he thought I was running from him because I was on a motorcycle. And then he uh, he we got to talking, and he realized that I was a guy. I worked at a transmission shop, and I fixed his car. And then he was suddenly cool. He's like, hey. So I was like, yeah, that's where I'm headed to work, you know. And so he's like, well, I already called us in. You know, I got to give you a ticket. So he gave me a ticket for um, a outdated inspection sticker. Let me go. Ah, uh, lucky. That was good. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, which franchise do you prefer? Halloween, Friday the 13th, Elm Street, Hellraiser, or Saw? Friday the 13th. I love those as a kid. Okay, I can't judge you harshly for that one. That's a good answer. Um, you know, your your top answer would have been Halloween, but uh, you know, <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth is a good one too. I'm zombie. I love those. But I, I was Friday the Thirteenth guy as a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like, awesome. I like I like I like things with a machete. And mm. I like the machetes. You know, um, I. I play, what is the game? Oh, goodness. Uh, where's the boyfriend when you need him? Um, there's a game that I play with, um, wait, is it Mortal Kombat? I think it's Mortal Kombat. And um, one of the, like, the new one has, like, Jason in it, and he, like, has his machete, and he, like, chops you up and stuff. It, it actually, I think, raises my blood pressure to play against him. It really does. I get so scared. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, and I'm freaking out. So, um, which makes it probably just this, you know, it's it's much more funny for him to play that character, you know, to, you know, chop me up. But anyhow, a little little tidbit there. Um, roller coasters, yay or nay? Yes. Yay. Yay, definitely. Yeah. Um, let's see, give me one interesting non writing related fact about you. Uh, okay. Um <laughs> I have a haircut that I do every time I get my hair cut, and I call it the bald spot fade. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you're, you're not that hair, old. Sounds <laughs> stylish. <laughs> yeah. yes, it's bald. <laughs> um, I cut it myself. But, you do, yeah. Um, what is your least favorite part of the writing process? Oh, man. So that's difficult. It changes. It, it really changes. Um, of the writing process itself, it when I easy. lose inspiration, it's like, you know, the last, the last you know, two projects I started actually stopped, and that's not like me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I got discouraged, man, because, you know, some of my past projects, they, they, didn't do very well, and so I'm like, man, what am I doing? This for? You know? And yeah, I just I was in a period of my life where I was lacking inspiration. I couldn't keep going. And uh, yeah. you know, where I live, there's a lot of chaos, and it's it's really hard to stay focused and stay creative. Um, so imagine. yeah, in those moments, I don't like that part. But when it's happening, when it, when the creativity is generating and flowing, man, it's just you can't beat it. You can't beat the feeling. Yeah, that's good. Um, and uh, here's my bonus question: uh, baseball or stamp collection? <laughs> oh man! I, so baseball card collection, you mean or? 
No, no, baseball is a sport or, you know, stamp collection. You're going to hate me, stamp collection. I, I oh, did not. No. I had a stamp collection. I had a stamp collection. <laughs> I actually used to hang out with my grandma and talk about stamps. Mm, yeah. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, is I, you know, I tell myself that I'm not trying to lead the guests when I say it, but I'm like, baseball or stamp collection. Yeah, <laughs> I, had a, I had an incredible baseball player when I was a kid. You know, I used to do that. We used to go to the shops and buy cards and get the price guides and all that stuff. And I was really into it. And then, uh, yeah, I had a great collection. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't watch it. I haven't mm. been watching baseball since Nolan Ryan. So, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, James is going to, if I don't be, if I'm not quick, James is going to push that button on me. But, you know, baseball season didn't, it wasn't that long ago that it started up again. And uh, my team is the Blue Jays and we're doing awful. What the funny thing is, is we're like, I think, second uh, from the, the last in our uh, league in the division. And, um, you know, I'm like, seriously, we can't even start out strong. It's just... Uh, I, you know, in one of these days, I'm I'm going to, you know, I say that. I say I'm going to switch teams and go to a winning team, but I, I never will. I'm too freaking loyal. So it's the Blow Jays all the way. Woo! And James didn't push the button. I think maybe he uh, fell asleep. No, I'm, I'm, being <laughs> res- I'm being restrained this evening. I am being oh. restrained. Just, uh, now you've, you've got that out of your system. That's it now for the rest <laughs> of the season. No, don't ever mention oh, it again. No. Ever. <laughs> ever. You know. You know I will because that will give you a reason to push the button. And I think that you, uh, you enjoy I, that. I, yeah, I like <laughs> pushing my button. I have to say, <laughs> always fun, always fun. So, so Chris, what are you working on now? Uh, well, I had I got a short story I'm working on, and uh, I plan to put another collection together. I have a, I have a few stash back and uh, yeah so I really I really don't want to go into that right now I got I want to keep that a secret until it comes out I just had one published at the, on Close to the Bones online magazine titled Today it's in two parts and it's noir it's it's in it's in four sections and in, in each character um, yeah they the story weaves each, each connector makes a connection with the with the next one and then their lives are affected. In a very bad way. Um, so yeah, I hope people will check that out. That's that's my latest. Uh, and I'm putting another collection together. So uh, it's going to be crime, crime noir. Awesome. It'll be a little I while. Have, yeah. Mostly what have, I'm doing now is uh, PR work for other authors. Um, mm-hmm. And this anthology is a pretty big deal to me. So I'm trying to put a lot of work into that. You know, I have to say, any time we have a guest who, uh, who uh, you know, calls out or something, that usually at the last minute, too, I, I go to Chris. I'm like, Chris, do you know of anybody you can, you know, recommend for the show? And uh, every single time you give me somebody amazing, like every time, I don't think there's a, there's not been one dud. It's been just great. I mean, it, so now any time I come to you and you give me somebody, I'm like, oh, that's going to be a good show. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, we, yeah. we, didn't, we, we do, we do have, this, we do have this, this woman on every now and then who doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> She's terrible. Yeah. I don't know who, who recommended her. She's awful. She really is. <laughs> I, I think we should, uh, we should get her on next week, though, and, and the week after, because it really, it, it makes me look good, I, I think. So we should she definitely has, She's her. great. I mean, I, she, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you know we're talking. You know we're talking about you, actually, don't you? Um, you, 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 you are. You're fun in your own little way. In your own I, little I way. I know. I know. Mm. I, I, I do think that uh, you know our listeners. They're listening for me, so you know I, I have to. I have to give them something to come back for every week, and it's it's to see what she's going to say next. You know, what is she going to mess up, or what is she going to, uh, mm-hmm. you know embarrass herself this week it's, it's the same reason people <laughs> want, love to watch those shows with sort of you know old people falling over um <laughs> my daughter loves those even on nick there's a whole there's a whole show it's literally just it's just fat people and old people and little kids falling over and it's just absolutely <laughs> hilarious usually usually on ice i think they, i think they put them on ice deliberately so they, oh, they, they're going to fall over you know maybe break a hip or something and kids love it it's great it's so entertaining <laughs> 
I will say that, that, and this was like years ago, we had that one show where you were like, did you just fall? No, I didn't. I can't remember what it was that like knocked over or fell over, but it wasn't me. <laughs> we do. We have the whole segment. We, we, what, what's that noise with Xtina? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I'm good now. I, I have a door. I can close the door and nobody bothers me. It's, it's, uh, it's much better. Um, it's not as entertaining, I don't think, but it's it's you know more professional, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody could anybody could accuse this show of being professional. To be honest, <laughs> I have to say, I just... and yet they keep agreeing to come back. No, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Stina, I heard you. Are, I heard you are you are getting out of the the dark poetry. You're no longer really the dark poet uh-huh. princess. You're writing uh-huh. love poems now. What's going on? You got all these light I know. Stuff, man. I yeah, know. It's, it's, like, it's really great, though. <laughs> you know, um, actually, it was over a year ago that um, you know I've I've always rhymed. I always rhyme my poetry, and um, I never really got the other stuff be honest um and i had a a, a friend and I, I read her her poetry and there were some of the poems that just spoke to me so deeply and they were they were just uh free verse and i'm like i'm gonna try to do that i'm gonna see if i could do that and um i haven't looked back i mean um and this is i i don't i have not broadcasted this nobody not too many people know this but i'll be putting out a free verse poetry book um so I, I, I'm aiming for uh, late spring. Um, I already have the cover. It's uh, basically all done. I'm just, uh, you know, going to plan the the release and the event and stuff like that. So um, I'm really excited because I think yeah. that I have grown a lot as a as a poet, and I still like the dark stuff. I still, you know, um, but when you're not in a dark space or you know a dark place in your life it's not easy to write dark and even though that's what i'm known for um yeah yeah so that's well, all i got next time you do an anthology next time you do an anthology give me a heads up i want to submit something Definitely. um I, I haven't um, been i'm not, not a poetry writer I, you know in in december uh i started talking to uh who's now my girlfriend rachel and uh man she just yeah, has all this stuff come out. I don't know where it comes from, but I've been writing poems like left and right. I've never done that before, and so mm-hmm. yeah, I, w- I would like to do something and submit it, and get it out there. Definitely, definitely. Um, we had a, uh, you know, some setbacks when we I, I wanted to do a uh, beautiful tragedies too, and um, that is going to happen. I'm just not quite sure when. Hellbound is a. Uh, we're busy. We're we're really busy, and um, you know. Um, but I do want to do that. So when I do, I will definitely give you a heads up. And we are just about out of time for our show, Chris. So can you tell us where we can find you online? Uh, check out the A Time for Violence anthology on Close to the Bone Facebook page. And I'm on Twitter at author Chris Roy. Awesome. I will get your links put up on our Facebook page. If anybody wants to stalk you, then go there and do it. And um, as always, we have such a great time with you. Um, I can't wait to have you back. So thank you for coming back. And um, I'll we, what we need, I'll tell you what, what, what we need. If you can round up some of the, the other authors from the Time for Violence, we, we could have a whole show and just, just get them, yeah. a bunch of them bringing in to, 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 read, to read snippets. So see if we, see if we can round up. See, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll be on, obviously. So that's two of us. So there you go. There you go. It's a yep. party already. So let, let's see if we can organize that. <laughs> All right. We'll, do, we'll, we'll make her. it happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Chris, you have a fabulous night. Thank All you. All right. Thanks, James. Okay. <laughs> see you guys. Uh, okay. Good night, Chris. And I'm afraid it's that time. And I've, I've lined up the next song. It's something different. And you suggested it in honor of our uh, mystery call earlier. So um, it is that time to say good night, Xtina. Good night, Xtina. <laughs> Thank you.